that. So much technology. So, uh, Akwaba, bienvenue, karibuni, karibuni nyote. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thank you for the invitation uh, uh, to everyone involved in running the program. I've really been enjoying it. I hope you saw, uh, oh, yeah, you've seen my questions. I'm, I'm really excited by the panelists, uh, the conversation we're having. And it's funny um, seeing the questions, the three questions uh, I was asked to answer about concerns or ideas about the arts. One of them was saying just being seen and heard. And just when my camera went down uh, and all the computer, everything stopped working, I saw the video playing saying I should be seen and heard. And I couldn't be seen or heard until now. So technology is definitely having its impact, uh, both positive and negative in the arts world. And being a musician who will say, I'm, uh, let's say, an African musician, but I'm just an artist, I'm just a performer, storyteller, or a conveyor of ideas. Uh, the technology is always something, I won't say I battle with, but I contend with. Um, because for one, I play a lot of old traditional instruments, like this uh, Kamalingoni, uh, Balafon, Seprawa, all these traditional instruments are the basis of my music. And yet, um, it takes a lot of technology sometimes to make them really sound and be felt according to their purpose. So something like Kamal and Goni. It's quite a task to, to, to amplify this properly and get the right sound. Take some technology that has to be really like high end, it could be very simple like a microphone. Uh, and the other elements of it, the equalizer and so on, uh, make it quite quite a task to have it have it uh, be correctly sounded. I'm just gonna use this microphone because I've been losing my voice and I, I wanna make sure I'm seen and heard. <laughs> so I'll play you a little bit of music now arranging through these instruments. I'm going to start with uh, guitar.
that would have played Led Zeppelin. But that's uh, a little guitar. I felt this. I felt to start with the uh, acoustic guitar. I felt to start with the acoustic guitar. Um, just because I think it's it's a for me it's a crossroad instrument between uh, the traditional string instruments that I play from mostly from uh, West Africa and uh, the technology or the, the translation of what those instruments were. So a lot of people have become aware that there's a Banjo has been around for ages. I used to dislike banjo. I used to like hearing it on TV, watching these guys do this, all these kind of intricate rhythms I'm playing on the banjo. I found it fascinating, all the rhythms I was seeing. It would appeal to my African sensibility. But then um, it also seemed to be coming always like, surrounded by uh, that Confederate flag. And some guys were like, yeah, or you ain't from around here, are you? And the next thing I know, when they're having a party, there's banjo, and I just, I still had a negative association of banjo because of that uh, juxtaposition of the instrument. It was years later that uh, now most of the banjo world has come to the realization that it's an African instrument um, that was played by Africans who were enslaved. They, they, Created, recreated the same instrument in America. And I think it was Ray Kuda who went to Africa and played with the musicians and found it and said, hey, this is the beginning of banjo. So that kind of like back and forth of ancient technology, what we call modern or recreations of it, and, and uh, everything associated with it has been something I've been encountering as a musician here. So, uh, that said, I'm going to play something for you on the bala or bala form. It's also known as jill. Um, in Ghana, we call it jill. In other parts of West Africa, bala. East Africa, timbila is also called marimba. Um, and sometimes people call it xylophone. But the xylophone is the deriv derivative of the instrument. So I like to tell people, like, there's for thousands of years or hundreds of years, this instrument has been around in Africa. There was no time at the same time in English that they said marimba. The Queen of England, I'm certain she did not say, bring me my marimba. I'd like to hear samba today on the marimba. I don't think the Queen of England ever said that. So when people compare this instrument to his other form, I say it's like, it's like calling your you're saying your grand, great grandmother resembles you. This is the beginning. So I'm going to play for you on the bala. And everything I play to you today is just from wood, wood, calabash, goat skin, and other strings.
Tu passes à moi, tu passes à moi, tu vas souvent la vérité, vérité d'amour. song uh, called Respect Café Bon Mot. Respect Café Bon Mot. Respect is a good word. It's even better when people actually use it according to what it's meant to be. Um, but I'm playing that song as part of what, what I was saying about the crossroad between our contemporary traditional uh, and that whole concept that there should even be a crossroad um, I'm thinking about what we were saying, uh, the conversations around technology and art, and there's something about drum language, especially Akan language in Ghana. We often have two drums, and those two drums are used to speak. We call them talking drums. So basically, all of our drums can talk. Balafon can talk. We please, we're producing the tones of the voice of what speaks. So, I don't know if my talking drum is hiding out somewhere today, but essentially, a talking drum is an hourglass shape. It fits under the arm, and you squeeze the strings of the, the drum to change the pitch. So, when it's low, 
et cause toi so it's played that way to convey the language and the same way if I go as a drum you can actually sing London Bridge is falling down the most important part about that drum is the interval between the low notes and high notes low notes and high is a similar voice so let's suppose someone is from Jamaica I'm not from there but I hear people say reggae yeah man Jamaica it goes doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo. it goes up to down and I notice people from other parts of Caribbean like Trinidad they go the other way carnival Caribana, jump up. They even say, down the road. They don't say, down the road. They say, down the road. But maybe the Jamaican will say, just down the road. Down the road, man. But the, the Chini will say, down the road. He go up, he don't go down. But the African language, we go up and down. We are the beginning of the whole thing. So we go up and we go down. So this up and down and this interval, of high low is like digital language it's like ones and zeros so when we play a message on the ballad it's the up and down between the tones that's creating the language communication so that same song is playing you on the ballad <laughs>
come from the generation of themselves. That's how, that's how I go to say it. So this song, Zudu, comes from, from uh, the sound of itself when I was creating it. So, so uh, just like the talking drums, I was saying all the instruments can talk. So all of our instruments can talk and uh, sometimes we give them names like man, woman, uh, father, child, the, the, the deepest drum, the leader of the drum orchestra is the woman, but it has the deep voice. You think about that one. It's the voice that projects the most and is the most heard. All the other drums, they're doing the rhythm. Um, so this song, Zubudu, it came from playing an instrument first called the uh, Ahatsu or Shaker. I knew I had one around here. So this calabash, this calabash represents the world. This calabash represents woman. The calabash inside, it has the seeds. It grows on the tree. And when we take the seeds out and attach them to the dress of their mother, they all hold hands and they dance together. There are all kind of folklore tales about calabash and why it represents woman and earth and uh, the creator. So this song with the zukudu, it starts with the And this shakiri will always give you, will always give you the breath, the speed that the breath comes at. And that will give you the tempo for the song. But also you think, the sound of that sh, sh, ah, it's the sound from the breath. And we get into other drums, they get to the chest, others get to your stomach. And the bass, the lower dynamic frequency you go, the lower part of your body connects to. So the bass gets to the booty. So for this shaker song, we have Zukudu created itself. It started. And I added the talking drum.
We're going to play down at John Taberna on Queen Wessel's Verena, Jungle Booty Orchestra. And this is free access to all these places. You don't have to spend any money other than, you know, the carrots for your donkey to get there. So you're welcome. <laughs> and uh, it's been a pleasure spending time with you. Uh, hello, you thank you. Thank you so much for that, uh, Kovena. That was fantastic. Um, and thank you to everyone who's been watching so far all day. Um, so we're going to take about a, a 10 minute break and our next panel will begin at 2.15 and that one is called Diversity Through Innovation. Um, so yes, that is it for, for this performance. Thank you again, Kovena, um, and we'll see you soon.